Hello, welcome to a new video. This Simply Conserve power strip promises to reduce the power consumption of your electronics by turning off several of the devices fully instead of consuming vampire power. They want to suck your electrons. Also, I'll be tearing it down to see what makes this thing tick. If you want to find out if this thing meets the requirements, keep watching. If the promise and the reality are in alignment on this, it could be a very useful tool for reducing power consumption of entertainment or computer systems while sitting around doing nothing. But what happens if the device itself is a bigger vampire? There's affiliate links, which earn me a couple of percent, but cost you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. Okay, so for all you packaging aficionados, it comes in a giant single-use plastic bag. It's not recyclable either. Nice, right? I can feel the eco-friendly greenwashing all over. Yeah, this is setting the tone for what is to be expected. The power strip itself has two always on outlets, four switched outlets and one control outlet. The outlet turns on when it senses a load is connected. I didn't find any specification anywhere for this, so I had to do some digging into the supplied user manual, more on that in a bit. The packaging also says it has less than 40 dB of noise filtering, which I'm sure is actually a typo, but they may have actually said something correct by accident. Here we find more green speak about how much energy this thing is going to save, but finally an actual specification for this thing. It says it turns on the outlets after sensing between 15 and 18 watts of electricity. So this is something I can test. Okay, so what's good? The device has a 15 amp circuit breaker, so fundamental overload protection is covered. The device has a protection level of 1440 joules of surge protection. Of course, joules is energy, but we don't know how fast that is. This is for protection against large voltage spikes like a lightning strike nearby or a large overcurrent event somewhere else on the grid. There are standards that define all these things. This is good. We'll dig more into this in the teardown. The device claims to be an energy saving power strip. This can be true, but we'll find out with many modern devices, this can be pretty easily not true. Also, I'm gonna look at the economics of this thing. So let's plug it in and see how much energy it can save and find out when the outlets turn on. All right, right off the bat, with nothing plugged in and the output not triggered, this uses over 0.7 watts and almost six volt amps. This is a joke, right? I knew this product is a faker and a product of greenwashing. Okay, that aside, time to use a USB power adapter to be able to see how much power this thing needs to trip the other outlets on. Going up the watts slowly, I found that mine tripped on at about 17 watts. This is within the specified range, so that works. And like other products I've seen, this actually uses less power when the outlets are switched on. So why not just leave them on all the time? Did anyone at this company even look into this product? As a comparison, I tested a bunch of power strips for power consumption, and then got some that used a little bit of power and some that used a little bit more. Not really a surprise since many of them measure the protection circuit to see if it's working, and that uses some power. I don't have the equipment to test the surge protection, it is very bulky and very expensive, but I can tear it down to see what makes it tick and check if it has the components at least. So this device has a couple of different modules and quite a few wires inside on first inspection. It's fine. The first module is the MOV, Metal Oxide Varistor Module. This is the surge protection. These are devices that don't conduct at normal voltage, but then at a certain voltage conduct very well. This has the effect of clamping voltage transients from those events like lightning strikes. These of course don't last forever, so these also have temperature sensors that will trip the protection devices off if they start to consume too much power. This has a circuit that uses power all the time and lights up an LED to inform the user that the power strip is safe to use. This is also common. This is typical of many power strips and surge protective devices, so not bad. There are better circuits to indicate that it's functioning and consume less power though. The other issue is the way it is wired. The surge protecting is not really protecting the sensed outlet as well as the non-switched outlet. It depends on how fast and how large the transient event is though. One thing I noticed missing is any kind of an EMI or radio frequency filter. So the claim on the packaging of less than 40 decibels of noise filtering is accurate. It has exactly none. Why did they bother writing this on the packaging? It also isn't a refrigerator. I think they should write that too. Okay, so the power measuring and switching module is next. It looks like a big relay and a normal capacitive dropper circuit. A capacitive dropper is basically a big current limit circuit. Being an energy storage element, it doesn't consume real power to drop voltage for the downstream circuitry, so it's easy to use, effective, and cheap. 
The relay offers exactly no buffer on the current level. 15 amps rated, so zero safety factor based on the current level. Under a current surge condition, this could pose some trouble and possibly weld the relay closed, making it a normal power strip that uses extra watts. So this circuit is most responsible for the higher power consumption of this device and the behavior of this device. This is using a capacitive dropper into a Zener diode to rectify and regulate the voltage. The reason why it uses less power when it is on is the relay pulls the voltage down so the Zener isn't doing as much work. The Zener gets hot in operation. After three minutes, this was at 67 degrees C in open air. Constrained in the case, who knows? Five year warranty. This wasn't the worst thing I found in the teardown though. The current sensing outlet, the part where you connect to the highest power part of your system that you plan to turn on and off, the solder joint on the live wires was so lacking in solder that it broke the joint just taking it apart. This is really bad quality control. The wires getting loose would certainly destroy the product and possibly other things. It is a simple expectation that the product is at least constructed correctly. This is a safety listed product, but again, that doesn't mean it's good. It just means it reduces the risk that it will burn your house down when it fails. In this case, if it shorted, it would trip the built-in overcurrent protection. Another thing I hope they tested is the current shunt, basically a resistor for measuring current. For the sensed outlet, which is literally on the capacitor used as part of the dropper circuit. The capacitor is referenced to the line voltage. The current shunt is referenced to the neutral connection. It looks like a pretty chunky current shunt, but at 15 amps, which could flow through this shunt, it will dissipate about three watts, which means it's going to get hot. At nine amps, it dissipates about one watt, and it gets up to about 54 degrees C in just a few minutes. Again, open air. It seems like a recipe for problems. Okay. So let's do some analysis with the numbers measured and figure out the economics of this thing. I'm going to work through a couple of real world scenarios. First, based on the power this device consumes and a four hour time in use and a 20 hour time in standby, the time in standby is the power consumption of the power strip in the off state. The time in the in use state is the power consumption of the power strip with the outlet switched on. Electricity is cheap, so it only costs about $1.15 per year at 18 cents per kilowatt hour no correction for higher current, it's 6.3 kilowatt hours of energy for your power strip. Okay, case one, a TV room. You have a set-top box, a TV, an audio receiver or sound bar, and a subwoofer. The set-top box needs about 0.5 watts at idle, but it doesn't use enough power when it's on to trigger the other devices. It also needs to be connected to get updates. The TV uses enough power to turn on the other things, but generally the set-top box turns everything on and off through ARC commands. The audio receiver only needs 0.1 watts of idle power, the subwoofer only uses 0.1 watts of idle power. So summing up all the idle power usages of the devices that could be switched on and off fully only ends up with 0.2 watts of idle power. The power strip uses 0.7 watts. Using this energy saving power strip would consume more power and the controlling device wouldn't be able to enable everything anyway. So this use case is a failure on multiple fronts. Okay, time for case two, a computer desk. A lot of computer monitors don't use that much power at idle. They generally have good power management and go into a very low power state when not being used. So let's say you have two 24 inch monitors that you leave plugged in all the time. In this case, the two monitors use 0.1 watts at idle. Then you have a set of PC speakers and a USB accessory that each also use 0.1 watts. So 0.4 watts of idle power total for the four devices. The PC is one of those new mini PCs and it's pretty energy efficient. So this system at idle uses six watts. Let's do something like watch a movie. The system will only use 10 watts playing back 4K footage from YouTube. So the initial startup from the computer will get the monitor and your accessories to turn on, but then after about 30 seconds or so, when you start the movie, it all turns off. That's not very functional. The same is true with modern laptops, if you use that as the base system. Now, if you have a larger gaming PC or a power hungry laptop, then you'll have less issues with turnoff, but the fact is you still aren't saving any energy. The power strip still uses more power than you saved. So there is a case where it makes sense. It's if you had about one watt or more of idle power usage which this can happen pretty easily if you have the right mix of electronics. 
Maybe you have a lot of accessories like a LED lamp or some other things or some other, you know, older idle power hungry monitors. In terms of economics, this power strip, if you had one watt of idle power and dropped it to just the power consumption of the strip would take 108 years to pay for itself versus a normal $4 power strip. In terms of my presented cases, it would actually cost more money to use it. There are certainly some high power consuming devices on the market that could be switched off when not in use. There are also alternate products to switch things on for a short time period, like this Belkin timer. I use this with a box fan in a window at night sometimes. Zero power used when off, and not an unreasonable amount of power when on. Just don't hold the button down as it acts weird when you do that. Probably why it's not available anymore. So yeah, um, no. The concept is fantastic, but the execution is poor. It technically does everything it claims, and there are useful applications for this device, but it is limited as an energy saver or a money saver. In my situation, you could never recover the cost over a conventional power strip. The fact is, most modern electronics achieve low standby power consumption, and this within itself doesn't meet those requirements. This seems to be a common theme with products like this lately. Anyway, let me know if you have and use one of these. There is a better way. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.